Welcome to the Christian Center Church Podcast. If you'd like to sow into this ministry, you can do so at the link below. Thank you for joining us, and we hope the message today will bless you. This morning, I want to minister a little while on beater-uppers and passerbys. <laughs> you know, you either one or you can be both. Amen, amen. I, you know, when, when I, I'm talking about beater-uppers and passers-by, we'll, we'll find reference to the, the Samaritan that got beat up on the road to Jericho. But let me tell you, the whole world is out there being beat up, church folks. And they think it's normal. They think it's all right. They think that, that that's the way that it goes. And we live in the day that the world is being passed by and beaten up. But let me tell you, we live in a church world where people are passed by and beat up. Amen. And you don't, you don't have to beat them up from the pulpit. Can you say amen? I, I'm never here. If, if I sound strong sometimes, if I sound like I don't care, listen, that just what it sounds like because I do care. I mean, how many of y'all know that, that if God's going to work in our lives, he's going to have to pick in them little places where you want to pick that or not. He, he, he's going to have to challenge you where you want to be challenged or not. There's no list of stuff when you get better. Now we turn to this page. That's not what it is. We, we turn that page because we're headed toward getting better. Can you say amen? And, you know, the world's full of it. They beat up how? Spiritually, physically, mentally, financially. And we, the believer, in some way must get involved in the lives of the hurting. Now, let me tell you, you know, we talk about that a good bit, about getting into it and getting, getting part of it or, or sowing into it or whatever it is. But we need to be part of that there's, I mean, y'all agree that somebody got involved and touched your life. That's why you're here this morning. I said, somebody got involved. That's how I got here. And the guy that worried me the most, and I wish he would go on and leave me alone about this Jesus stuff, was the first person I wanted to know that I got saved. Can you say <laughs> So it's something that's foreign to us. Some kind of, it's foreign when we're in the world and we don't know that they're trying to help us. Well, sometimes we get to church and we don't know that they're trying to help us. Can you say amen? And I'm not talking about people that have been trained and don't want to. I'm not talking about people that know better and don't want to change. I'm talking about the unsought and the untaught. I'm talking about people that don't know. I'm talking about people that's never been, really been loved legitimately without wanting anything out of them. We can do that. How many of y'all believe we can do that? Can you say amen? Well, the Father did it for you. What did you give him for him to love you? What did you do for such great a love? I didn't do anything but accept what it is and weep and cry that it's so good and a good deal. Can you say amen? You know, I'm talking about the untaught and the unsought. And sometimes the church people sit under pews and they're untaught. And they're sit on pews and they're untaught and unsought. They don't hear it. They don't get it. They're not reached. Can you say amen? You know, the devil can stick his fingers in your ear while you sit there. <laughs> amen. You know, I don't know if any of you have ever felt like you've been beat up and left. Looked like they got the better of us and they left us. You ever been in a relationship and you give all for them, just leave with it all? <laughs> Y'all, come on now. Preachers are not legit. You, you don't limit it or exit preachers out and people because of what feelings and stuff. Amen. Preachers are called to be more, more feeling like. They talk about to be more understanding. They're supposed to be about being more forgiving. Can you say amen? But I serve the one who is the greatest forgiver of all. His name is Jesus. Can you say amen? Come on. You know, when you get down to really understanding how, how beaters and uh, passerbys walk, beater-uppers and passerbys, if we are to the place that we don't want to be involved, if we're to the place that we can't be involved, if we're to the place that we don't know how to be involved, we might need to take view and wonder if we have not been beaten and left behind. You see, when I was a kid, they'd tear you up. Anybody got whippings when you was a kid? Amen. They had murder. Let me tell you, only reason they didn't kill us when we was kids, they couldn't raise the dead. Now, I guarantee you, if they could have raised the dead, they would have killed a couple of us. Martha, I'll kill him. You raise him. Amen. That's my grandparents. Amen. But you, but you know that, that in the midst of hurting people, in the midst of people that have beaten up, been beaten up in this life, is the ideal of compassion. Y'all know Jesus did a lot of his work with compassion. He loved, he had an inward feeling for people. Yeah, they, you know, they, they understand that the soul, you know, is in the belly. The, the Word of God says it's in the belly, and it, it's about right here, and I believe it. One, because the Word says it, and two, I experience it. He said, what are you talking about? You ever seen somebody get hurt, and it hurts you right, right there? You, oh. 
Right? You're, well, it's getting you in your soul. You, that's, where you're, that's where your mercy and your grace flows out of you. That, that's who you are. Can you say amen? And when you see somebody get hurt, you go, oh, it hurts you down. Why does it hurt you by your name? Why does it hurt you right there? That's where the soul is located, according to Scripture. He talks about the bowels yearning. He's talking about something changing, something wanting to. But we got to have compassion for people. Can you say amen? We got to want to help people. Is anybody in here? And I do understand they got to want to be helped. Not everybody wants to be helped. It was the power of Jesus. He did miracle after miracle with compassion. He did those things. And we are responsible in some way to be a compassionate church. Now, I know we live in a world that will hurt you. We know, I know we live in a world that will that, scuff you up. I know we live in a world that's hardly ever kind. But that's, that, that's not us. We're the king's kid. Can you say amen? We belong to, to someone else. You know, in Luke 10, you can meet me there in Luke 10. But I'm going to start back down to the 25th verse. But when Jesus started, he told him in 2 and 3, he told him, Therefore I say unto you that the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore to the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth labors into the harvest. Go your ways and behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. You know what he said? It is kind of scary. It's kind of scary that, that we're, now I don't know. Now, what can a lamb do besides run and jump? He can't bite. He can't claw. <laughs> but you see, it may, they may look defenseless to a wolf, but they have a shepherd. When he sends us into the harvest, we have a shepherd. When you go and witness the people, when you go and do what God has called you, you're not alone. He said, I send you. So the start of the text is that, that there's a harvest. The start of the text is that there's something going on out there. There's something happening. He said, I'll send you out in wolves. He said, you go like lambs. 25th verse. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up tempting him, saying to Jesus, or to Jesus saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, what is written in the law and how thou readest? You know, that, that's, a good, that's a good word. That's a good question. He's asking him, and you got to know the disciples at this time had experienced uh, work over the devil. They, they had exercised dominion over the enemy. They were successful. They were, they were doing great, and they were moving. And then somebody wants to justify the law, and he says something, and he, and he stood up. He, he's written in the law, and Jesus said, how is it written? And he said, thou said that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And the church said, thyself. Love, it means in a moral sense. So you owe people just to morally owe them. You just morally do. The Bible says to owe no man nothing but to do what? But to love him. And you love him on a moral sense. You love him. You care about what's going on. Now, I grant you, some people you can't help. I grant you, some people don't want help. But that same thing, some people that are hard to help, there's some people who need help and just don't know how to ask. Come on. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered rightly, do this, and thou shalt live. The Amplified says it this way. 28, Jesus says unto him, You have answered correctly. Do this habitually and you will live. He said not part-time, not when you feel, but habitually. You, you do it consecutively. You do it all the time. You know, if we could get mad and take offense, if we could just love people and be compassionate, as easy as we take offense and get mad. I said if I could just be compassionate, as sometimes I get disturbed. Y'all come on. Well, which one's controlling? That, that's, that's the real answer. Can you say amen? But he's telling it in 29. He said, but he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, who's my neighbor? Now, the word means neighbor is, means countryman. It means somebody. It could mean a Christian. It, it could be a, a neighbor. It could be a friend. What Jesus is trying to do is cover the spectrum. He's telling your neighbor. He means your countryman. It could be a friend. It could be the ideal of a Christian. It could be somebody near to us. It could be a neighbor man. It could, it just could be a man. Meaning a man. He said, that answered rightly. But he's willing to justify himself. 30, and Jesus answered and said unto the certain man that we said, the certain man went down to Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. Now, he wasn't. Hired out a thief, he fell among them. Now, was he using good sense? Said he was stripped, I meaning robbed, that he was his raiment, and he was wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And the church said half dead. Now, now that's what the devil wants to do, is leave you half dead. Come on, that's where he starts to steal. Then he does kill. 
Because whenever he got there, he said that he went down from Jericho. Now, we got to know that Jericho, between Jer- Jerusalem and Jericho, was a road that went downhill the whole time. How many of y'all know when you go away and go down, you get in a dangerous place? He's going down, and he was taken by robbers. He was stripped of what he had. They took, it, they took from him and left him for dead. And 31 Amplified reads this way. And Jesus replied, a man was going down to Jerusalem, from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he en- encountered robbers who stripped him of his clothes and his belongings and beat him and went their way, and this is my word, unconcerned, leaving him half. Dead. And they see that that's what's wrong with the church today. We got two problems. We started the other, we started a couple of weeks ago, talked about loveless church. You got loveless churches and you got loveless people and you have unconcerned people about where somebody is at. And so as Jesus is really at the, the heart of this, is the concern what they did to him, they had no concern for his life. The devil doesn't care what the aftermath is of your life. He doesn't care not one way. The way of unconcern is the same today. Robbers, you know what he did? He robbed him, he stripped him, he beat him, and left him to die, but he didn't die. You know, the the, the very people that are dying out there need somebody to care about them. The very very people that made bad decisions. You know why we won't help people? Because they don't make the right decisions. They don't make a decision. Well, they got their own self in that. Okay, they did get their cell phone. What does that have to do with you being like Jesus? What does that have to do with us being compassionate? What does that have to do? Come on. You know what happens? We become beater-uppers and passerbys ourselves because they don't fit the criteria. What are we going on? You know, see what I said. You know, and if it's uncommon, unconcerned rather, un- unconcerned and unwilling, would it be the safe to say themselves are wounded and something's wrong? Why do we do that? Why, why, why do we see somebody with more troubles than what we have? Because we're loaded up with troubles and never surrendered them to Jesus. Now you feel like you can't take on anything else and you become a passerby. We're going to get to them in a minute. They're good religious people. Religious people are some of the best passerbys there are. Robbers is beater-uppers. Murderers are, uh, uh, just do that. But you know what the Christian does? It should be trained. The Christian that should be looking in. But at least we could pray or passing by. Well, we'll see. And it said, but that, does it really matter? What well, Jesus said, the thief cometh what? To steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he come to do. Steal, kill, and destroy. 31. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed on the other side. And the church said, the other side. Whew. You know, sometimes we'd rather be on the other side. You know, but sometimes you got to be on this side. you got to be in the midst of it, the thick of it. And you know what it says? By chance, that Greek word actually means by accident. We talk about divine appointments, but let me tell you, right now we need a divine accident to see who they are. And the priest, you know what he does? He goes to the other side. Jesus said that they were unconcerned. He said, listen, they left him, stripped him, beat him. And left on unconcerned. You know, the, the priest here is loveless religion that likes the look, they like the sound, but they don't put anything behind what they're doing. You've seen people look at them and say, oh, oh, you must be going to church today because you dressed up. That's the only time they know you possibly be going to church today because you brushed your hair and combed your teeth <laughs> before you left. So what, what do we have? We, we have somebody that, that, that is suffering. Somebody is there and somebody has the means. And, and unconcerned religion is, has no remedy. Religion, ha, not, religion has not one ounce of healing in it. Religion has not one ounce of a eternal direction in it. Oh, it has some directions. It has some things. It has some something in it. Come on. But the robbers had robbed him of his peace. You know, that's what he'll do to you. Rob you of your peace. Rob you of your joy. Come on. Well, it's doing good. Uh, but then, then we find ways to blame people. I'm doing good. They showed up. Best thing you do is outgrow them. Best thing you do is get you a box and stand on it. You'll be taller than them. Do you something. Amen. 
But un, un, unconcerned religion has no remedy. He looked over. He couldn't do nothing. He could not do anything but, but pass on the other side. Unconcerned religion has a heart just to pass on the other side. That's about all I can do is get on the other side, get on the other way. Wait a minute. Now, let me tell you now. You, you get some things. And your mind that you think are, are tough, you think are bad, you think even people and things. I'm going to tell a story on my wife. Y'all got a minute? <laughs> True story. Not like the rest of them I told you are lies, but this is real, real. <laughs> and they had this lady in our town, and she was pretty rough and tough. And she'd already shot a man or two men and bit certain parts off one man. And you can leave that to your imagination. And she was pretty tough, and she would tell people what to do, and they would do it. So I was a young boy. I was about 16, 17 years old. We was at the laundromat. We didn't own a washing machine. <laughs> I know y'all never didn't own one, but I didn't own one all the way. We were washing clothes. We got them clothes washed, and my wife was over there, and we put them on the big slick table, and she was folding them. Well, Ethel come in. She come in, got her clothes dry. She looked at me and told me, fold them clothes. I going down. I was going down that table folding clothes. My wife come in and said, "What you doing?" I said, "Ethel told me to fold her clothes." She said, "You don't fold no woman's clothes but mine." I said, "Oh, this is a good idea." Yeah. I said, "She." Got... She said he was folding my clothes. She looked at him and said, "He don't fold no woman's clothes but mine." Now, this is what y'all know. I don't fold clothes today, but. I surely weren't folding clothes that day. <laughs> so, you know, that's what the devil wants to do, get a reputation. The devil wants to go before, do what he can, kill, rob, destroy, do all these things, leave people where they are, come on, and people will go along with what's happening. Can you say amen? Yeah. 32. And likewise, a Levi, when he was at the place, came and looked at him, and passed on the other side. Look means, always an idea means, to look means in the past. He never really looked at him until he got this way. That's what we don't do. We, y'all listen to me? I know, I'm talking to all of us. Can you see? <laughs> you know, they, they can see, they can notice, they can view they actually can see the problem, but again, they have no remedy. They have no, they have no answer. They have no, nothing for uh, somebody that is in need, that, that are dead. Can you imagine? This, this man is left and dying. They look, these people are pillars of the community. These are the people telling us what to do or passing on the other side. Yeah. All they have the power to do is look. What you looking at? Unconcerned religion that, Cannot even recognize their neighbor. Uh, unconcerned religion and this attitude is much like today that you just can't get involved. I guarantee you, it's scary today to get involved in people's lives. It's scary. They got crazy exes. They got crazy wives or ex-wives. They got crazy people. I understand that. But Jesus started this out with us. He said, I'm going to send you out there among wolves like a lamb. So it should be scary. It should. But what we need, we need leadership of the Holy Spirit. We need to know where we need to be. We need to know where we're going. We need to know who we, y'all listening to me? I'm not telling you to go into a gang-ridden uh, community. But I guarantee you there's some gang, ex-gang members that can go down in there. Come on. But unconcerned religion is just that. You can't even recognize the man as a neighbor. He said, who is my neighbor? And religion couldn't even recognize him. The priest couldn't even recognize him. The people that's supposed to be directed, the people that has it together, were failing to see what Jesus was trying to show. Yeah, it's a little scary today. We such need the leadership of the Holy Spirit. 33, but a satiri, a, excuse me, a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, he came where he was, and he saw him and had compassion. He didn't move to the other side. He, he didn't see his cognition and look somewhere. He didn't change sides of the road. He stayed where he was. He stayed the course. 
Is it, is it, what, what did, was it nice? I'm sure it wasn't. Did, it, did it, look, it look like somebody was hurt? Did it look like somebody needed medical attention? Evidently, was it scary? I'm sure it was. But compassion overrides scary. I said compassion overrides scary. If we will walk in the Spirit and be led by the Holy Spirit. Can you say amen? I wouldn't know. I wouldn't fool with him at all. I wouldn't. Do, well, maybe you won't. But you see, you got to understand, the devil is more, demons are more scared of you than you are scared of them. You have more power over them than they have over you. The works of the enemy are under your feet if you're doing, you, you, but you, he don't look that bad. Can you say amen? I told you about Bubba when he went to town. He went to town. He got him the first time he ever barely been to town. Got him a motel room, and he got him a room. He's about ready to go up, and a guy drinking and sitting at the table asked and said, "What's your name?" He said, "My name's Bubba." He wrote his name down. He looked about that. He said, "What you write my name down for?" He said, "I write everybody's name down. I can beat up and whip." Bubba got to think about that. He went on up in his room. He got up there. He got the more thing. more he thought about it, Bubba didn't like it. So Bubba went back down there and Bubba looked at him. He said, now, I'm telling you, you can't whip me. I'm, you're going to have to prove it. You just cannot do it. You can't whip me. He looked at him. He said, okay, Bubba, I'll take your name off the list. <laughs> you see, if you don't take up for yourself, your name will be on the list. If we let the devil run, we'll be on the list. Now, either we're the compassionate bunch or we're not. We're the bunch that want to do or we're not. Don't you scare. He said, I told you like a lamb. You got, we fit the lamb, Bill. And he said, I'm sending you out in wolves. Can you say amen? But one came down and he had compassion on him. Compassion means to feel sympathy. It means to have a pity upon, to be moved with the compassion. You know, it, it, compassion is not that whenever you see that, that little kid with the big belly and the snotty nose and the flies blowing and you're going to get up and write a check. But the commercial goes off and you don't write the check. <laughs> now don't look at me like that. That deserves a water break. I didn't know that many of us in here. <laughs> fact. This is fact. Compassion does not judge. Compassion does not lecture. <laughs> compassion, compassion does not act superior. Boss and George, don't listen to me. This type of help is based only on the attitude that comes to us through Christ Jesus. He gave him a look. He, he didn't tell him, said, now you know that's what we do. Well, all right, well, he, he's in a bind. Well, what did he do to get in the bind? Well, he, he did, wasn't too smart and he did that. Well, that's just him. You know, people find reasons not to help people more than they'll find reasons to help people. And I'll be the first one, second or third, to tell you, you can't always help everybody. But if you get stuck on you can't help somebody, you'll never help anybody. If you don't get the idea you can help somebody, you'll never help anybody. You got to give God glory. It's true. And I understand that. I understand that. I'm not going to send y'all to Harlem this morning. <laughs> I'm not going to send y'all down in the ninth ward this morning. Amen. But, you know, if God led you to the ninth ward, you'll be all right. God led you to Harlem, you'd be all right. Can you say amen? But, you know, godly compassion is, you know what it does? It, it reacts in action. Oh, my God, y'all ought to write that down because I didn't. Compassion acts in godly, what? Action. That's what it does. Well, does it really matter? You know, what, what, what does it matter when you do anything? Well, well how many of y'all believe Jesus is the same today, yesterday, and forever? How many of y'all believe that Jesus is? Well, then Jesus was teaching, and he said in Matthew 25, 38, he said, they asked him, he said, when we saw thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee, or when we saw thee sick in prison came to thee, and the king shall answer and say, Verily I say unto you, As much as you've done this to the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. He said, Well, they're not a brethren. They lost. Well, they're going to be. Amen. You know what it takes? It takes investment and in believing that you're having an eternal investment. Now, listen, some people you witness to never going to do much. They're going to do That's just the way it is. But that's not going to stop you from changing lives if you allow the Spirit of God to lead you. You'll get to that person. You'll get to that place. And you'll have compassion to work with people. We've tried in the church to work without compassion. But if it matters, 
And he asked him, he said, when, when did we see you? When was your neck? When? He said, when you done to them, you done for me, you helped me. So I'm going to put it the other way. When you didn't help them, you didn't help me. I'm just telling you what he said. You see, what he wants to do is be responsible for it. Do I think you are? Yes. Is it scary? Yes. We like going out in wolves. Yeah. Or it's something, you know, out of our, our, our realm. We need to be prayerful. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit. We need to lose angels. We need to, come on, somebody. 35, and on the morrow he departed. Well, I missed him. Where's my stranger? Where's he at? Somebody give me, uh, and had compassion on him, but isn't it a verse between there, 34? Somebody read 34. I missed 34. 34. Yeah, where well, we 34. <laughs> I don't even know. It's in the Bible. Somebody find it. It's in Luke 10. Man, I've done four notes down. I'm in four pages down. Amen. What's 34 say? And then shall the king say unto him, that's the wrong one. And he went to him and bound up his wounds and poured in oil and wine and set him on his beast. How many of you know he got involved? You got to get invested. Can you say amen? Isn't it amazing how much help we can receive, some of us, and we don't need to help anybody? Mm, go back over here, amen. <laughs> now, you got to understand, but it was a certain Samar- Samaritan that came down. Now, they, they, they like a... They like about like half citizens. They stayed around, got mixed up with them Assyrians, and now they're Samaritans, and they're really not with us. You remember the woman at the well? She told Jesus, we know that Jews don't have anything to do with Samaritans. When Jesus began to use a Samaritan as an ability to teach Jewish boy how to act, it wasn't too comfortable with them. Pick the worst thing in town. So, well, at least, at least the drug dealer, he shares his dope with everybody. <laughs> we wouldn't want that, amen. And 30, 35, he said, and on the morrow he departed and took two pence and gave to the host and said unto him, take care of him, and whatsoever thou spend more, I'll come and I'll repay thee. Now, man, that's investing. That's invested in people's lives. Now, you know, I am the guy. I am the sucker. At sometimes, but other times I believe it's divine appointments. I'm that guy that gives, gives the guy on the corner, amen. I'm the guy with the fold-up sign. I'm the guy, yeah, I'm the guy. I seen one sign, and this is what it says. He said, I won't lie to you. I'm buying beer. At least he's honest. It says five bucks. It says two bucks. It says, I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. But we don't want to help people because we want them to put the five bucks on a sandwich I'm loving y'all. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I ain't saying nothing, but I believe he's right. <laughs> I about found out when y'all quiet, y'all doing good. Took me a year. I'm coming. I'm a slow learner. Come here, say me. I'm the guy that stayed two years in the third grade. So y'all hold on a minute. And on the mall, he, he took two pence. That don't sound like much, but you know, it's something like a day's wage. I don't know how much y'all make, but, but break that hourly wage down. This guy got involved. He really got involved. And he's left there. And he, but you know, really, compassion don't ask how you got there. Compassion don't, don't, don't tell him what you... Compassion doesn't instruct people. You hear what I said? Compassion does not instruct people. Compassion gets up and goes into action and does something. Can you do I mean, no, we were, well, I'm, well, I had to tell him before I give him anything. I'm going to tell him. Well, wait a minute. You know, sometimes we want to be in charge of it. Can somebody say amen? But invested is what we should be. Invested until it's an eternal investment that we have. Two pence is like a day's labor or two days labor. You know, three kinds of people. Only the Samaritans came close to see. Three, three kinds of people. Came. Only a Samaritan. Somebody that we wouldn't want to be. Somebody that's not Jewish like us. Somebody that doesn't go to the temple. Somebody that doesn't have my tradition. Somebody that doesn't serve. That out them, here he come. He did. You know what it is? There's lost people. I outdo saved people in some things. I'm sorry, but it's true. It's true. But, but how many know that won't save them? Won't get them saved. Won't, won't get them into heaven. But I tell you what it does. It does some great reaping and sowing on this side, I'm sure. Can you see me? You know, he got close to that not only could he see, 
Not only could he notice, but he noticed there was an ideal of life in the man. That's what we really got to understand is that they're a human being and they're alive and they're well. And you can't do nothing. You can go pray for somebody a million days after they did. You know what they are? Still dead. They've been praying for Kobe Bryant. He's still dead. <laughs> You'd have thought Kobe rose from the third day, but he didn't. Can you see me? Oh, way yeah, I heard him talk about him. <laughs> King Kobe. He should have been up, but he didn't rise. Can you see him in? You know what? You know what he did? He got close enough to see that some instead of going the other way, he seen the horror of what it was, and he got involved. The other ones just see the other side. The other ones looking back. It's a compassion or the unconcerned, those that, that, that have lovelessness, amen. You know, let us not be self-righteous Christians, but let us be ones of hands-on duty, doing that which we need exactly what we would want somebody to do for us. Would you want somebody to help you? Would you want somebody to get the flies off? Would you want somebody to stand you up? Would you want somebody to get you out of the road? Seen a poor turtle on the way over here to service or so ago, and he was on his back. Well, he's just on his back, but he didn't have his head stuck out. I'm saying, if he's not willing to stick his neck out, I ain't going to stop me up. I mean, he got, this turtle has got to help me. He looked like he's just having a good time. Amen. But you know, some people are just like that. We need to turn them over. Amen. Whether they stick their necks out or not. We need to turn them over. We need to be part of what's going on. Can you see me? And he looked, and he went in, and he, he got invested. He see that he was, and he wasn't a, a self-righteous. He, he got his hands dirty. He got involved. Let me tell you, everybody that you're going to witness to are not clean people. Everybody that, that you comes to church is not clean people. Everybody, come on. Mm. You know, I understand. Sometimes you don't want to get too close to what might happen. You know, we live in the day that, that, that you, you can't hardly call the law because the, they'll come to your house after the law leaves. It's, we live in a scary, but you have to use wisdom. Y'all listen to me. You have to use wisdom in these things and get involved. You know why a lot, most of us are not involved? We, we're afraid of repercussions to get involved. Listen, I don't think you have to take them home with you. I don't think you have to move them into the back room. <laughs> if you do, you ought to get a, put a ring on it. <laughs> But, you know, I, I do understand it makes us vulnerable to help the hurting. I don't know. It, it, it's something between. There's, there's some atmosphere. There's, there's something about when somebody is really, and we don't know them. We, we don't know why. We don't have all the logistics. We don't have all the things that are happening. You know what you're really doing? They've got to fit your criteria for you to help them. Back up here. You know that, 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 that there's people in the community that a lot of churches wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole. That's sad but true. Sad but true. Sad but true. We're training our way out. Can you say amen? We're learning our way out. Can you say amen? We're getting comfortable. Can you say amen? We're getting powerful. We're believing God protect us. And if God send us, we'll be all right. If God tell us, it'd be okay. We got to come to the place to say we're going to be all right. Now, I guarantee you. My oh, man, yes, I got to. Okay, I'm going to tell you. I've helped people and, and get hurt helping people. I've helped people and cost me money, Sister Brenda. Pastor Brenda, it cost me money. And y'all listening to me? And I've let some other things go. And we, I have done that. But let me tell you, that's only on the small percent. Had great success in other places. We can't be like gamblers. You know what gamblers do? Got any gamblers in here this morning? Raise your hands. <laughs> I can't believe he almost got me at church. <laughs> That's your business. But you know what gamblers do? Gamblers always talk about what they won. They never talk about what they lost. And you know what Christians do? Christians want to keep their win record good <laughs> so we don't fool with it. Y'all listening to me? And then somebody said, this is what they'll say about the time you try to help them. Said, you know, she's over there and she's got them little kids. 
If you got that man come over on Wednesday, you know, you should come over. He know, wait a minute. What the man going to her house on Wednesday's got anything to do with you helping the kids on Saturday? Give God glory because it's true. We have a criteria. And like gamblers, we always remember the successes. Come on. But Christians have a criteria. They look like us. They smell like us. They talk in tongues like us. Mm-hmm. Let me go get rid of that note because they don't want that one. Now nah, I'm going to keep it. I wasn't going to throw it away. But, I... <laughs> but it gets past that. And, and, and yes, I've been hurt. Yeah. And now the Good Samaritan represents the hands-on Jesus people that Jesus has the remedy for people. Y'all believe that? And when you get invested like I should and you get invested like we should, and I want to thank you this morning for your support in this church. But let me tell you, we need to be involved in some way in the lives of people. Now listen, okay, you said. Well, Jerry, I, I, I just don't know what. Look, you know what you do? They got this crazy thing. It's called the U.S. mail. And you put something in that mail, and they'll take it to their house. It's amazing. Pretty thing. Pretty good thing. I think it's new. I don't know. What I'm saying, you don't get involved, but you can write a check. You can write a note. You can drop a card. You can invite. Well, he just looks like such a scary guy. You know what I found out? Most big, burly, scary guys are big gummy bears. If they didn't have that, they wouldn't be scary and they don't know how to act. Yeah, big gummy bear. But he never asked him what happened. He never asked to judge him. He never asked him. <laughs> you, know, you know what he was trying to You know what we tried to do? Find out if they're worth helping. I didn't think y'all had this in y'all, but y'all, we getting it down, brother, buddy. Don't you squinch your eyes at me, brother. You come get on this. But it's true. Well, then if it's not, you tell me what were we missing. You tell me what we're doing wrong. You tell me what's stopping us. And I'll put it in my notes, and next time, I'll say it. And I'll put your initials by it. There's something. Compassion is a beautiful, strong theme. It gets past, and Jesus said, I'm sending you out like lambs for wolves. So let me tell you, let me tell you, there's a man that went down from Jericho, from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell on thieves, and they, they robbed him and left him and, and, and looking good, sounding good people every day, walked on the other side and wouldn't have. But somebody we don't think very much of got involved, got invested. You don't have to be like them. Just be like him. Don't be like them. Be like him. And you'll have the goods to do it. Can you say amen? But he never judged him. He never asked him. He never found out if he was worth helping or not. He never asked him if he could do anything for him. What's your business? Oh, you. wait a minute. So you sell used cars? You happen to have a good beater? Now we're going to get involved. If they got something, uh-oh. You know what I'm talking about, Brother John. I heard him snicker. He's no car salesman, ain't you, brother? No. <laughs> you know what? We, we wait from the fit criteria. Then we help them. Now, watch this. It's going. I'm getting out of here. It's Father's Day, and I know y'all got crock pots to get off. <laughs> you know what? Listen to me. We wait for people to fit the criteria so we can help them. You know what's wrong with that? What's the other side of what's wrong with that? We think that we have to fit a criteria for God to help us. That you got to do this and oh, you messed up. And you see, you had this bad thought. I know, you know, I got born again. I found out bad thoughts go to church with you. Oh, nobody knows about that. I wish they had like a a, a, a church helmet. You put it on, ain't nothing but Jesus music when you put it on. You know? Wouldn't that be good? That they'd probably arrest you when they saw you wa- driving with it on. He's on that music. It means they pull him over. <laughs> People get involved if they can be paid back. I'm going to go ahead and help him. I'm, but we bad for that. Well, come on. Somebody buys you lunch and you won't stop till you buy theirs. That's our Western way. They're not getting a lunch up on us. <laughs> People often uh, do not get involved because there's nothing in it for them. Yeah, I said that. 36. Now, which of these three thinkest thou the neighbor? Thinkest with a neighbor, he that fell among thieves. And he said, he that showed mercy on him. And Jesus said unto him, go and do likewise. The Amplified says this way. He said unto him, he said, which one showed compassion and mercy to him? And Jesus said unto him, go 
and consistently do the same. Be consistent with it. So you know what that means? Look at me. We ought to do something that we can be consistent. Just be consistent. We don't have to go and turn the world upside down. We don't have to go and, 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 and I guess we'd be turning it right side up. But we don't have to go and win 50 people to Jesus to do something. But you can, you can have 50 nice words in your porte and, and, and your porte and speak to people. Can you say amen? And your portfolio is something like Jesus. And you can have that. Can you say amen? He got there. He went on the other side. He said, which one do you think? He said to one, he said, Dude, you know what the Samaritan did? He bandaged. He got, he got involved. Can you say amen? This morning, I want you to stand with me. We're going to get you out of here this morning. I want you to know this morning, I want you to know that it's good to be involved if you have the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Now, if the Holy Spirit's not leading it, that, look, think back. The times you tried it, it failed. You tried it and something happened. You did it and, and it made out more trouble. Was you led by the Spirit, was it? Did you do it for the right reason? Did you do it accordingly to what scripture? Y'all listening to me? Well, there's some people doing it. I'm going to go ahead and help him, man. They got, yeah, you're doing it for the wrong reason. You're doing it for the wrong reason if you're doing it for the idea of getting something. You're doing it for the wrong reason. Come on. If you got to have a checklist to be able to help people. Now, don't get me wrong. You know what? He never asked him a lot of things. He never asked him where he was from. Never ask him his last name. Never leads us to, to believe that, that he had to fit a criteria before the Samaritan would help him. You know, look at me. There was no criteria put on you for the Father to help you. There was, you didn't have to come to a place for God to help you. Can you say amen? He said, which one do you think? He said, the one that had the compassion. He yes, he, he's not really for sure. Which one thou thinkest? He said, the one that showed mercy on him. The Samaritan, you know what he did? He bandaged wounds. He poured in oil that should have smoothed. You know, people don't need to know they're wrong when you're trying to help them. You, you really need to pour in a little oil and smooth things out. Just pour it in. It's, you know. Yeah, if you wouldn't have been down there to Jack's cut a tire, you, you wouldn't have got beat up with it. That's really not what's behind it. Can you say amen? He poured in wine. It, it, it's an act of cleansing. That we go about it in a way that's with joy. We go about it a way that, that's according to Scripture. Can somebody? You know, he put him on his own beast of burden. He, he must have walked himself. I said he must have walked himself. It's kind of hard to get a semi-dead man on a burrow with you. So he said he put him on his beast. He put him on. He, he put him on. And he began to work. He, he inconvenienced himself somewhat. And he must have walked. And you know, he, he, put, he didn't take and put him under a shade tree. He took him to an inn. Now think about that. He didn't take him to a barn. Didn't even take him somewhere under a shade tree. He took him to an inn. He took him somewhere where he could be taken care of. He took him somewhere upscale. You know, really what we should do is when we help people, we upscale. Well, would you want to, if you was wounded, would you want to go to an inn or under a tree? I think I'll go down there today. But he bought him, you know, and he continued to nurse him. He didn't take him somewhere and drop him off and leave him. He didn't do those things. You know what he did? He got invested and he said, tomorrow, he said, when I come back, he said, I'm going to bring whatever he takes up, whatever. I, I'm, I'm still responsible for him. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? We, we, we've helped people. We've been somewhat compassionate, but we never invested in their lives in a way that we're willing to spend more tomorrow. Oh, my goodness. The wine was, must have cost money. How y'all believe the money? The wine must have cost money. And y'all might believe the oil must have cost something. You know, the room at the end must have cost something. But think, think how prepared he was. He was prepared with wine and oil. We should go out with the spirit of gladness. 
We should go out with an anointing in our life. We should go out with an oil. Y'all listening to me? Well, you shouldn't have to stop and go to the store to get what he. No, he loaded him on the beach, took him there, and you know what he did? He got involved, he nursed, and he did. He didn't ask him what he did. He didn't tell him you got what you deserve. Lots of times we think they get what they deserve. Oh. And you know, when he when he left, when he when he leaves money, when he tells him he'll be back for the care of the cost it's like two days wages again you know and a lot of help that 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 we need today is monetary we need monetary to keep the lights on we need monetary to 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 pay the needs but you know what we need we need not be bankrupt in compassion we need not be bankrupt in being like jesus we need not there's no excuse What we have to do is understand that first of that text. That I send you out like lambs among wolves. It's scary and they're out there, but I'm sending you. Remember when he told them to go to the other side in the ship? He said, we're going to the other side. A storm arose, but let me tell you, they got to the other side. But compassion changes things. Either we're beaten up, passing by, or pouring in healing. In other words, the old proverbial saying, we're either part of the answer or we are part of the problem. I know it's it's Father's Day. (laughs) I know it's Father's Day. But I want to encourage you that we can be a people of compassion. We can be a people that does not just pass by. We can be a people that does not find excuse not to do, but we don't even have to find an excuse to do because we're led, because of what he said. I send you out as lambs and mongrels. That sounds kind of scary already. But you have to know this guy must have had courage, must have had confidence. And you got to understand that, that this man was in the same position that this guy was with robbers, except he had wine, he had oil, he had a beast, and he had money. A great candidate to being robbed. But he wasn't robbed. He was protected. Actually on a mission. (laughs) See, sometimes when you were... You're moving and and you don't really know what's going on. You just might be on a mission. You just might be on a mission. I want to encourage you to continue to be invested. Y'all, it's not. It's your play. I want to encourage you today that we have a master that found us on the side of the road. We found one that found us bleeding and dying on the Jericho Road. And he has poured in all. He has poured in. He has set us up. He said, I'm going to hear you up and I'm coming back to check on you. I tell you, our master's coming back to check on us. This morning is a good morning. Amen. To be Christians. Can you say amen? (laughs) Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name this morning. We thank you, Father God. We ask you to touch us and direct us, Father God. And we know, Father God, we don't even preach these things because we have them all. We preach them because we have you. And, Father, I ask you to touch us that we'll be more compassionate, Lord, that we'll be able to pour into people's lives the anointing, be able to pour in the wine of gladness, Lord God, that we'll be able, Father God, be a people that's invested in the lives of people, and not because they do the things we say, Father God, because we do the things you say. We just change, Father God, our minds and attitudes toward them, and we ask you to touch us, Lord, that we'll do it in a godly way. And, Father, I thank you this day, Father, for correction, direction, that we be not beater-uppers or passerbys, Father, but we'll be involved with compassion in Jesus' name. And the people said, amen. Give the Lord a big hand clap of praise.